Hello, everybody. Good to be with you. So as you can see, I've got different background and I've got different company. Well, actually, it's not different, just you may, may see them get up or get down off the couch over here. I've got Willie and Jack. We're all in the cabin in uh, our backyard in the gem room, and, uh, which Betsy put in uh, this past summer as part of summer 2019, as part of the Keep Fred Alive project, because uh, I was just kind of dying behind the computer. Just now I'm in decent shape, so it's, it's well, worth, well worth the time and money to have done it. Uh, so before we go any further, let me tell you that I've got a public sot song coming up Wednesday, March 4th. And this is today is March the 2nd. So if you're seeing this after March the 4th, you can look forward to a Wednesday sot song, every sot song, every, every week at 3.30 Eastern time. Uh, that would be 12.30 um, Pacific or it's 9.30 uh, in London. And I don't know if I'm going to do it. Uh, if, if I'm going to do it every week if I get support for it. And if I don't get support for it, I'll know that it's not needed. So uh, it's going to be 10 bucks a throw, which is half what it's th this time and maybe the next time. And then it's going to go up to like, a, I don't know, five for $75 or something like that. And, you know, or, or, or X amount per, I don't know. We didn't really looked at that all that yet. But I do hope you'll come join me. I hope you'll support the site song. Um, I'd like to meet some of you that I have only um, met on the YouTube comments board and stuff. And, uh, and a lot can happen in 90 minutes. And uh, I'm not saying that anybody is going to, but I'm saying it's always possible that somebody could wake up. Um, they've woken up in my satsangs before. And so, you know, it may be a two question satsang for all we know. But if um, we get the, the right people, the right questions, the right timing and all of that, um, cool stuff will happen. That's the only thing I can be sure of because it always does and I don't do it. So uh, I don't mind um, bragging about it because it's none of my business. So the awakeness handles that. It's my job, so to speak, as it's the unit's job to get the unit in front of the computer. Same way it is for the, doing a video just like this. After that, it's its own God, I'm out. So what I want to do a video about is something that Einstein said, and he got the idea for it from the philosopher Schopenhauer. And uh, I got it from my friend, John Wiersbutt in Michigan. And um, this is what, um, and what it is, is this. It's that, Man can do what he wants, but he can't want what he wants. Schopenhauer's take on that was man can do as he wills, but he cannot will what he wills. In other words, I got every kind of, all kinds of choices here in the dream. That's the way it works. There is, you know, that's what people do not understand. I saw a comment last night talking about, ah, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, because, you know, the, who's, who would be there to do this and that? And, and I always get that kind of crazy stuff. And um, it means that somebody has probably had, you know, had an awakening experience, but is certainly not clear at the moment. <laughs> and um, the, what, what, they're, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that um, there is the appearance of, there is free will within the dream. There's free will within the dream. I want to pick up this phone and show it to you. Like, I thought about that, and, uh, and I, by God, I did it. And that was an exhibition of my free will. However, where the idea came for me to pick this up to begin with, and as if there's a thread here, for this unit to pick this up and show it to you to begin with, I got no clue about that. See, I, did, I didn't think that thought. That thought pushed that action into, into place. But it bypassed a Fred. It had to because there's no Fred here. <laughs> there's awakeness here. There's awakeness there too. Hey, awakeness, how are you? See, all I can ever see is me. It doesn't make any difference what direction I look in. 
So the one who's looking at the video that it thinks Fred is doing right now, you're cutting the video and you're watching the video and you are the words within the video and you are the message within the video and you're also Jack and Willie over there and my nifty bookcase behind me. You're all that, you're all that. But let's go back to the idea of the, do we have free will or do we not? That's, that's, the, that's the big question that philosophers have been asking for thousands of years and we're gonna answer here today, right? Not, we're not gonna answer it their way, but we're gonna answer it, which is that philosophers have been arguing for thousands of years that, or hundreds of years, by well, thousands, actually thousands of years, that about whether we do or do not have free will. Some argue that we do have free will. Some argue that we don't have free will. I have a little bit different question. My question is who in the hell are they talking about? <laughs> There's nobody here to have free will or, or fail to have free will. There's, there's no Fred here. This is a walking cadaver. The lights are on, but there's nobody home. I know you think there's somebody home, but there's not. And I know it looks like it and it sounds like it. That's the way it works in the dream. See, and, and when you dream at night, there are characters in there and uh, they seem real as long as you're dreaming. Well, so do these. You don't actually dream and wake up. The, you, there's actually you dream and then you move into this dream. And then in, within this dream, you dream at night within the dream. <laughs> so let's be clear on what the dream is, what the real core dream is. We've gone over this before, but let's go over it again. So this is not Fred's dream. This is just not Fred's dream. I thought for years and years, decades, that this, well, years and years, but I didn't want close enough to the money for to to realize it was Fred's dream for decades. And then I got on the track where I realized, oh, this is Fred's dream. Wow. And I'm creating my, I'm, Fred is creating his own reality or he's co-creating his own reality or he's doing this or that and the other. And it's just was a wonderful story. It's just not true. The reason I can tell you that is that there's no Fred here. See, that's the part that I had wrong. It's not, the, the core dream is not that this is Fred and he's dreaming and he can or cannot dream anything he wants. The core dream is that you, awakeness, are dreaming that you're a Fred and you're a dreaming that you're a you over there. Whatever your name is, just fill in the blank. You are awakeness and you, are, you have, you're, you're wearing all of these bodies, so to speak, and what's looking at it through, through these eyes is the same thing that's looking through your eyes. Exactly the same thing. See that? What's looking through these eyes is exactly what's looking from your eyes. Yeah, get up close. You can see it. Yeah, get up close and see yourself. <laughs> so within the dream, guess what? Fred has free will. Now, Fred is a dream. That's what we got on, that's the, that's the really, really tricky part, is that Fred is a dream. Now this thing will answer to Fred, right? And Betsy would tell you that she's married to a Fred, but, um, but she, wouldn't she wouldn't actually believe that. She would tell you that because she didn't want to throw people off, <laughs> nor does she want to be put in a home, but uh, she wouldn't believe that, not if you really pressed her, right? And um, I say, I love you. And so does she. And, and, and what we're talking about, we're, we're just blowing kisses at ourselves. <laughs> there's no one here. So there's free will. The reason it feels like there's free will is that there is free will within the dream. But let's do, let's think, look at a different kind of dream. So I dreamed last night that uh, I found a million dollars. It was a fabulous dream. And I woke up this morning, I didn't have the million. And I used to actually have this kind of dream as a kid, it was a pirate chest. And I could never 
get the pirate chest out of the dream. And I would wake up and I'd be so disappointed. I just want to go back to that dream so I'd get my treasure and pull it out onto the bed, you know, into this world. But you can't do that because it was a dream and it was a dream chest of pirate treasure. And it was a dream beach that it was buried on. And it was a dream character that found the dream pirate chest. When, when ordinary night sleep concluded and this dream, the daydream, so to speak, and the daydream began, then it just kept, the, the dream just kept moving. Only now, instead of a dream character that I, that this thing, something it thinks it's seeing in a dream, this is the dream character. This is a dream video. I'm talking to, this is a dream character right here. It's a dream character. Guess what I'm talking to? <laughs> Another dream character, right? That'd be because I can't talk to anything but a dream character because there's only this dream. There's only this. So, it's not about free will, and it's not about the absence of free will. It's about who you really are. Every single problem that I listen to, and I listen to a bunch of them, <laughs> and every single problem that I listen to always goes back to identification. Identification is misidentification because I can't really I can uh, I can't really identify with awakeness. I mean I know that I am awakeness. I know that I can't not be awakeness, but I don't know what the hell awakeness is. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what it is. I don't even know what it means. It's a code word. It's a code word for something that's prior to consciousness. prior to consciousness. Now, we sometimes hear, you know, all oh, the world is made out of consciousness and everybody's just consciousness. Well, I'm not gonna argue with that, but what I'm gonna tell you is that doesn't have anything to do with you. See, consciousness slash oneness slash God, all of that's here. See, and I'm not gonna tell you there's no God, I'm just gonna tell you that there's a dream God and that, that this, this guy's dreams, that this character dreams, that dreams there is or isn't a God, dreams that, um, <clears throat> well, just dream, absolutely dreams everything from, this thing is dreaming everything from morning to night. I'm dreaming, see, uh, three years ago, I dreamed that we actually moved into this house up front. But it, since I'm just concluding construction today, what I discovered was that actually what we did three years ago was get ready to move into this house. <laughs> and now I am waking up to the fact that I'm moving in today. That's great. I'm moving in right after this video. It's going to be great. And when I say I'm moving in, what do I mean? I mean, this unit's going to get up and go to that house, but I'm not, I, I'm not actually here. See, I'm actually the unborn. And as the unborn, I don't have anything to do with this. See, but I can think I do, and I can think I'm afraid if I really want to suffer enough. And you can, you, you're welcome to think that you're an individual. I don't want to take that away from anybody, and I can't take it away from anybody. You know why? Well, I can take, I can, I, I can take away the thought, but you're not, an, you're not an individual to begin with. I know you feel like a separate, distinct, concrete individual. None of that's true. <clears throat> Within relativity, that's true. But relativity itself is not true. We don't want to say it isn't. We don't want to say it's a lie. We just don't want to say what it is because we don't know. See, I really do not know. I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on here. And I don't know what doesn't know what's going on here. So I'm really lost. But I notice I'm also free because I don't have any stories about what ought to be going here on here. So there's no 
projection, no disappointment. See, I have very, very low standards for the performance of this unit. If it, if it gets out of bed, that's a win, right? If it doesn't get out of bed, that's a win. If it gives itself breakfast, cuts a video, or wakes somebody up, that's, that's all a win. And it all counts within the rules of relativity and the experience of relativity. But it doesn't really matter. Why, what do I mean when I say that? Because the ego goes, oh my God, nothing matters. And I, I've, got, I've got to drag units off the couch all over the world, right? I swear to God. They call me and they say, oh, Fred, I'm all, I woke up and I just, I just don't want to do anything. I just really just want to sit on my couch. And my first question to them is, who the hell are you talking about? See? The, 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 what the, what's happened is that awakeness has shown itself to itself through a specific unit, just as it did here, just as it may have done, it's certainly done through many, many of you, not all of you, but many of you. But the, what happens is the ego then co-ops that and it becomes Fred's awakening. That's what happened to me in 1992. And it took no time at all for ego to slurp that up. And it happened again in 2006, but it was delayed. And then it was it never set. In other words, there was oscillation, just like that probably many, many of you are experiencing. And that oscillation is where it feels like <clears throat> I'm clear. <sighs> What was that all about? I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not so clear anymore. So I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear. This is good. I understand. Oh, I see. I see what Fred's talking about. I see what these books are all about. God, how could you miss this? It's the most obvious thing in the world. My name is Fred. I don't feel good. <laughs> Welcome to isolation, right? My name is Fred. I'm bummed out. So, What I'm going to suggest is that don't try to make this video something that's not. See, Billy got, Willie got disgusted. He got dropped off the sofa and into his bed. He was, he, he was tired of me hedging my bets. He wanted me to just tell you the straight out truth. What's the straight out of, what's, what is the straight up truth? You are awakeness. You are consciousness. But that's only as true as far as it goes. It's true as far as it goes, but it doesn't go quite far enough. Because, yeah, it's true that, there's, that, that, that you are consciousness, but do you notice that you don't remember, and I don't, if you do remember, I'm going to tell you, don't tell me about it because I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to believe you made something, accidentally made something up, right? It's just something, a thought occurred, and it became a, a memory, made it into a memory. People have false memories all the time. And if you remember something prior to your birth, it's a false memory. And I know that I'm going to probably get some woo weirdo stuff on that and why, why you're the exception and all that, but I've never met the exception. I've never met anybody but me. And I don't remember a damn thing prior to the birth of the Fred unit. There's just, and, and there's not even a longing there. See, there was no awareness of myself prior to the Fred unit. There was the potential for awareness. There was the potential for everything you see and hear and feel and touch and think. All of that. That's the potential. The potential is the that that you, you Nisargadatta was talking about when he said you are that. He was very clear about it. I don't know why it's not clear today, but very few people talk about it. You're that which is prior to consciousness. So 
because there's a sense of being here, isn't there? Do you notice that? I mean, you can check for yourself right now. There's a sense of existence here right now. So was this sense of being always here? I mean, it feels like just, oh, well, I'm a just eternal. It's always been. It's not like a, oh, I am, and I'll see, I just am, just, just now, like I just freshly got here. Oh, no. Uh -uh, that's not the feeling at all, is it? The first time you notice consciousness itself, first time consciousness notices consciousness, the, the, the feeling is, my God, uh, I'm consciousness and, 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 and it's eternal. I've always been here. I've never not been here, blah, 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 blah. And on one level, that's true, but not on the deepest level. That's not true. What about prior to the sense of being? See, consciousness is an arising. I am is a discovery. There we hear so much about I am, I am, I am in non-duality. Okay. So I am is actually a discovery for something untouchable. Whatever it is. Can't be, I'm not even, I'm not going to try to describe it. It can't be described. I'm not going to, I can't even tell you that I know it. I certainly don't know it objectively because there's nothing but it. See, that's, that, there's nothing to know it. No, nothing to, there's nothing to compare it to because there's only it. <clears throat> there's no comparison to reality. Notice that. There are, there's in your head, I mean, your imagination. <coughs> you can have a party or a nightmare up there but it's just in your imagination. <clears throat> There's only what is. So do you think I should, should write a book? Well, Katie, Katie wrote Loving What Is. I should write a book. For it. But it, my, my book would not be a spiritual book. It would be a self-help book. And it would be Loving What Isn't. <laughs> Right? Come to think of it, my friend Kathleen brought this up in Satsang yesterday, that we need to grow to love what isn't. But see, that's the, the human experience is what isn't. It's not like the good experience or the bad experience within human experience. The human experience itself, it's a dream. So this, oddly enough, is one dream character talking to no, none of the dream character about the mechanism of the dream and how the dream actually works while remaining within the dream. Now, stuff comes through this unit that isn't part of the dream and it didn't come from the dream. I don't know where it comes from and I don't know what it, I don't actually know how any of that works. I wouldn't, uh, see, that's the problem is that everybody thinks that with enlightenment, you come to know more and more and more. And the truth is you come to know less and less and less. But I can remember Eckhart Tolle talk, talking to an audience years ago and he said, uh, yeah, I really don't know. He said, really, I don't know much. He said, uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I know much less than most of you here. <laughs> And he was right, yeah. Because everybody else knew that they were a Bob or a Nancy watching an Eckhart Tolle. Or Tolle, whatever the hell. I can, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure really how he does that. But I think it's Tolle. I was told for me for years when I was following him. That was what it was in my head. It's not coming to know more and more and more. This, I'm, uh, uh, the, uh, Enlightenment is not an addition for the unit. It really isn't. Enlightenment is subtraction from imagination. See, when you take away everything that's false, the truth is all that's left. If I'm sitting here. Whoop. There we go. <clears throat> so, if I let's say this is the truth, 
Yeah, I got one of these down here too. <laughs> I got them. I got them. I got to have them. It's the it's the foundation of duality. And so th this is the truth underneath here, but it's covered up. See, this is like this is that which is prior to consciousness, and then this is consciousness. And on and this is the sense of being Fred. There's a sense of being, generalized sense of being, then there's a particularized, a specialized sense of being Fred, which can't exist unless there is first the raw sense of being. But at any rate, when you've got the, the truth covered up, all you have to do is take away what's not true. See? It's just take away what's not true. And the truth shines by itself. We don't have to do anything. But notice something here. When I pull this off, what have I added to, to our scene here? I haven't added anything. What I've done, what have I done then? What I've done is I've taken away what's not true. This is covering up reality. This is the veil, right? This is the veil from the, like my book, the book of unveiling. See, that's what that book of unveiling is. And I, that's why it's named that is because exactly that is that we take away. Once we unveil the truth, it shines by itself. We don't have to do anything. And this is not an ad. We just took away what wasn't true. It's subtraction. It's not addition. And all of, well, not all of you, but many of you are out there doing the same thing that I did. And God bless you. Uh, Cause I, I had to do it for as long as I did, and you're going to have to do it for as long as you do. But I'm hoping that this will perhaps accelerate that little bit of time for you. That's what you, that's, that, that's when I talk about influence, that there's, that there does appear to be influence. So even though there's no free will, then what I'm saying is, I mean, notice that you're, that, that, that unit's in front of this video. And this video is talking to itself through that unit. It's influencing itself. There's no one influencing something else. There's only it influencing it. And this influence, this clearing, you can influence clearing by coming here. You can influ influence Clearing by coming to satsang, which 25 to 40 people do every week. But my God, there are thousands and thousands of followers out there and nobody comes to satsang. Why in the hell not? Because you're scared to wake up. That's why. You're scared that I'm going to tell you that you're not awake. And the reality, how do I know these things? Because that's how I felt. And I was scared too. And I was scared until I just couldn't stand. It became when I became right ready to stand up and actually face the world and say, I'm willing for you to tell me I'm not awake if you can help me become stabilized and clearer. Something said that. It's the way it looked. And so I, 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 first person I talked to was Ajay Shanti. He was, whoop, and he knew immediately, oh, I've got an awakened being on the phone. That's great. He knew because of the quality of the question that I asked. And I had no idea of that when I asked that question. I just had a, I was just asking a question <laughs> that on my mind. I did not know that it was a question that an enlightened person would think and that a non-enlightened person would think. But that's the way it is. So Don't make this out to be more than it is. Don't make this out to be about something other than what it's about. What this video is really about, it's about who you are. See that? You, you, you think you have problems, but you, that's because you think you are a, 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 an entity, a separate entity that has problems, and you're not. You don't. You're not a separate entity. You don't have any problems. How do I know? Because you're the same thing I am, and we are the unborn. Now, this is the world. If ever there was a world of the born, this is it. 
This world was born and this world will perish. This unit was born and this unit will perish. <clears throat> the opposite of birth is death. But there's no opposite to life. You can use a capital L there if you want. And there's no opposite to life. You are life. You are the lifing that's here. You are the life that's giving life to this scene. You are the life that's giving life to this unit and that one, to these animated cadavers. Pull the life out of this unit, pull the animating presence from this unit, it'll hit the floor and start to smell. We want to get away from it. Bury it, please. Burn it. Do something. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I know I used to love it, but <clears throat> I don't care for it anymore. That used to be my most treasured friend. See, but 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 the my most treasured friend already left, and all he's all I got left now is the husk, and the husk is starting to smell. So burn it, bury it, do something, get rid of it. It's raining here. This cabin has a tin roof. Beautiful. Actually, I don't think it's 10. I think it's... Betsy wouldn't settle for 10, I don't think. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is, but it's metal. And it's pretty. And it makes a great noise. And it might be 10. I don't know. See, I don't know that either. I'm just looking at, just looking around because I'm in amazement that this place exists, that this little cabin exists. How did this happen? How did I end up talking to you? There's one of the chances that at the end of a life of just, you know, selfishness and mass destruction and, and all of this, that, and the other, that, that, that it would end up like this. What were the odds? A hundred percent. It couldn't happen any other way. People think that I shouldn't have woken up <clears throat> because of things from the unit's past. This ain't about the unit. Betsy and I watched a show last night. Um, what is it? Uh, anyway, it's Mind Bender, Mind Blower. Mind, mind something, Mind Bender, I think. Whatever it is, it's about it's the FBI that chases down serial killers. So uh, it's pretty fascinating. And last night, uh, they mock interviewed. I mean, it, you know, it looks like, it, it's a it's the show is fiction folks but within the but it's based on a true story and within the the true story part of this fictitious uh story they interviewed charles manson now i don't know if anybody got a transcript from charles manson or not in and that, that they were actually quoting charles manson i don't know The, the writer in uh, the Hollywood writer could have just injected words there. But I'm going to tell you something. Whoever injected words there had had an awakening. Did Charles Manson have an awakening? I should do a video on that. Did Charles Manson have an awakening? Well, since there was no Charlie Manson, that unit, anything could have happened through that unit. It, that unit could have, could have awakened and it, and, and a whiteness could have noticed actually without judgment for us, it would have noticed with horror what was happening. But in truth, a whiteness would have just noticed, boy, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm inhabiting an idiot or a maniac, which is exactly the same thing I thought when it inhabited this. It has nothing to do with the unit. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with merit. It has nothing to do with your non-dual education. All that's very helpful afterwards. All of that's very helpful for the clearing process to have contact and all of that. That's very helpful. But to wake up, nothing's required. First two people that woke up with me had never heard the word non-duality. They didn't know anything about any of this. 
and they never did right well one of them i mean they woke up so they they knew what it was but they weren't quite sure what they were looking at awakening is not about the unit as i like to say it's, it's not about the pumpkin folks it's about the candle in the pumpkin and awakeness would just as soon use this damn old candle here this worthless old tin can of a candle over here I mean, it's some, it's kind of a joke, really, you know, you, it's sort of like, I, 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 I could even use this just to tell the truth. And it's like, but, but almost nobody's going to believe it. Huh? It doesn't matter. Everybody that's supposed to is going to come to understand it. Everybody that's supposed to is going to have a session with it. Everybody that's supposed to is going to wake up. The people who don't, they can scoff at it. They can believe it. They can, do their nose at it, whatever. I've had plenty of that. But I'm still here. Because the truth is the truth is the truth. And what I do is I tell the truth. I tell it very, very clearly and plainly. People don't like that. Because it takes all the mystery away from what they do and the hyper coolness of what they do. But that would only be if they believe there was a they there. See, if spiritual teacher Bob has got a good thing going by telling you that, man, if you kept, kept on coming back, you could end up like spiritual teacher Bob too. They don't want to hear about the fact you're already awake. But you are. You're just not who you think you are. But you are awake. I'm not telling you that Bob is awake or Fred is awake. For God's sake, spiritual teacher Bob, we don't want spiritual teacher Bob thinking that spiritual teacher Bob is awake, although many do that aren't. But it's, you know, just the way of it. It's not like they're doing it wrong. They're just doing it the way they do it. We need them. How do we know we have them? One of the things late last night with the Charles Manson, he said, you know, the guy was talking about, you know, what do you mean there's no right or wrong? They're just everything just is. And, and Manson looked at him and went, well, it is, isn't it? And, uh, blah, 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 blah. and the, there were a lot of things that, that were said in there that only can, it just wouldn't have come out of anybody that had not had an awakening experience. I mean, not just like coming up like that. Could have been thought about, maybe come up with like, what would, be, what would he say that would be like a non-dual guy? What would he say? Well, well, he could say that. It wasn't like that. It was just it's completely spontaneous. That's just the way he is. It's like me. It's like you thinking that I could stay up in the house and write down notes or, or, or you know, rehearse what I'm doing here. or have some idea of what I'm going to say here, and I have no idea whatsoever. So you like it if you like it. If you don't, you don't. If you like it, hang around. There's more. If you don't, go find something you do like. I don't have no problem with that. But, you know, be nice enough so that the others can find it, right? Just try to, try to not tear down what you don't understand. That's general, good general rule, isn't it? Nobody follows it, but it's a good general rule. Almost nobody. Okay, we're done. So thank you very much. It's been a meandering video, but I, you know, we're just here talking. Do you get this? This is not like the spe extra special video. I'm just talking to you. That's all I'm doing. My name is not Fred Davis, and I'm just talking to you. I'm just talking to myself. We're just talking to ourself with a capital S. See you next time. Bye-bye.